Welcome back. We have the healthiest schools in Alabama by one measure, a name for the pro football team coming to Birmingham, and that time Alabama tried to annex Northwest Florida. I'm Mike Morgan and we're down in Alabama. The Alliance for a Healthier Generation has cited 10 Alabama schools among America's healthiest, reports Trisha Powell Crane. Alabama has nearly 650 schools that participate in the program. Winners had to satisfy certain criteria with their school meals and daily student activity. There are three levels of winners, gold, silver, and bronze. Only one Alabama school got the gold, and that was W.O. Palmer Elementary in Butler County. Among other schools receiving either silver or bronze were Lincoln Elementary in the Talladega County School System and Munford High School in the Talladega County School System. Bluff Park Elementary, Hoover City Schools, Deer Valley Elementary, Hoover City Schools, Greystone Elementary, Hoover City Schools, Gwynn Elementary, Hoover City Schools, River Chase Elementary, Hoover City Schools, Rocky Ridge Elementary, Hoover City Schools, and Spain Park High, Hoover City Schools. I'm hearing there's a chance we've picked out a pattern. We'll get back with you on that. Birmingham's pro football team, the one that's going to play in the Alliance of American Football, begins play on February 9th, which is smartly after the college football playoffs and National Signing Day. Well, AL.com's Mark and Abinett reports that the Birmingham team now has a nickname, and it's nothing like the last team name unveiling in the state when we learned about the Trash Pandas minor league baseball franchise up in Madison. This team will be known as the Birmingham Iron. That's obviously a hat tip to the Magic City's history as an iron and steel town. Said Iron Coach Tim Lewis, This great city of Birmingham is tough, hardworking, passionate, dependable. All attributes that our team will uphold both on and off the field. The iron concept shows up in the team logo and uniform colors, which will be black, gray, and silver. We mentioned earlier that summer wasn't finished yet. Well, on Thursday, Muscle Shoals registered its hottest temperature of 2018 so far, with the mercury rising to 100 degrees even. And it got close to that down in Tuscaloosa, hitting 98 degrees. It was just a little cooler down on the coast, with Mobile reaching a high of 93. Did y'all know that we were awfully close to cutting a deal for most of the Florida Panhandle? And I'm not talking about back when the Spanish and French and everybody else was trying to claim pieces of the coast. I mean, after Florida and Alabama were two states admitted to the Union. Well, for a fuller explanation, here's expert explainer Jonathan Soboleski. Even when it was still Spanish land, folks in Alabama and the Florida Panhandle had called for the Panhandle to be annexed by Alabama. A lot of settlers in the Panhandle were from Alabama families, and swampy terrain and forest made traveling from the Panhandle to the rest of Florida a real slog. While the only thing separating the Panhandle from Alabama were some small rivers and invisible lines. So Alabama was eager to bring their Panhandle brothers back to the fold. And if the state ended up with the lucrative harbor in Pensacola, that's well, not so bad either. And in the aftermath of the Civil War, it looked like it was finally going to happen. In 1868, an agreement was reached between Florida and Alabama to sell the Panhandle to Alabama for $1 million. But as you can guess, if you've seen a map, something didn't work out. Turns out a commission was formed to figure out the nitty gritty of the annexation, and those guys apparently started living high on the hog off taxpayer money. I can't say exactly how much they spent, but I can say when Alabama lawmakers found out about the commission's quote, extravagant expense account, support for the deal fell through and it never happened. The issue would be brought up a few more times, but once Pensacola got connected to the rest of the state by railway, the demand for annexation largely went away. So that's how the panhandle narrowly avoided becoming part of the state of Alabama. A handful of corrupt politicians ruined it for everyone. The more things change, the more they stay the same. I'm Jonathan Soboleski for Reckon. Thanks, Sobo. Now, he's talking about my two favorite states right there, the only two I've ever lived in. But I'll tell you, I'm not sure the world's ready for us to combine Florida man and Alabama man just yet. I mean, it'll get there, but it ain't ready yet. Thank y'all for listening. Have an outstanding weekend. And remember, you have a standing invite to come see us anytime you want to at AL.com.